So in this video, we're gonna go through the browse abandonment flow. We will go through some strategies that we use. I'm gonna go through the implementation, the technical aspect, and I'm also gonna show you some design examples that you can steal to maximize your results with your flow. So without further ado, let's start immediately. So welcome in this browser abandonment tutorial for Clavio in 2024. If you're watching this in 2025, I'm super, super sorry, I'm gonna delete this. But this is probably, you know, how I feel most of the times when we audit some new accounts. This is what everyone is doing. Did you see something new? But what you should actually do is proper browser abandonment flow handling objections. And this is kind of the entire theme of this video. I will go through the technical aspects. I'm also gonna go through the entire strategy that we run. And I will give you some design examples that you can follow because a lot of times when we audit those brands, they just have like a super simple setup, pretty much cookie cutter that either their current or past agency put together, you know, pretty much like a copy paste kind of thing, or they had some time in the past where they put some attention to that, but now it's pretty much outdated and you have to, you know, adapt with the current field of email marketing, or it's literally just the entire setup stolen from Klaviyo itself, from the templates. So whatever the case is for you, you should probably revamp your browser abandonment or restart with the perfect state of mind. And I'm also gonna go through the entire setup here. As you can see here, I have everything prepared for you. Let's start with the super basics and the technical setup. So what we need to do, we basically need to create a flow. You could just click on flows in Klaviyo and then create flow. And then what you can do is you could type in browser abandonment, standard, and then that's pretty much it. So by that, you already have a few things that you know you need to set up. You have the trigger, which is the view product. This is the trigger. You definitely need to check if your integration within Shopify or whatever platform you use and Klaviyo is set up correctly because you need to track those as a custom metric. But you know you can see here when someone viewed product and we can also see the flow filters that we have put together here. Checkout started zero times since starting this flow place order zero times since starting this flow and has not been in the flow in the last 30 days. You can always adjust that and want to, you know, adapt if you want to not run it too aggressive. You can do 30 days if you want to make it a bit more aggressive. You can do 14 days or seven days, something like that. And then there's like one small caveat that a lot of brands or like a lot of Klaviyo setups do not pay attention to is if you have set up the added to cart a trigger and flow, which I cover in one of my other videos, but basically uh, it's, it's, it's a custom trigger that you have to install, not super, super technical, but basically you need to custom adjust your template in Shopify, your theme, and then you can actually track the add to cart button, just the single button. Other than that, everyone who clicks on the button and does not go further, they are calculated and are part of the browser abandonment. But if we install it within Shopify, we definitely want to have a dedicated flow for that. So that's why in theory, if you have put together the added to cart trigger, you need to basically have it set up that you have a flow filter that says added to cart zero times since starting this flow. And that's pretty much the technical part. So not too, too complicated. And then, you know, you can play around with the different hours and how much time you want to have between things. What we usually run with is two hours. And then we want to do 22 hours because we basically adjust it to have one dedicated day because you know most of the time if let's say a customer takes a look at a product at 7 p.m their best timing is 7 p.m so what we do not want to run into is send them an email at like 12 p.m or something or like 3 a.m or something so we definitely want to do that and then we want to you know not have smart sending we definitely want to have utm tracking if you have that set up so that's the setup and then you know you can do as many emails as you want to we usually run between four to six depending on the strategy, the aggressiveness, the resources we have, the likelihood of someone needing more nurture. So it's it's custom made. Like we do not have a set strategy in and of itself. I will give you some tools that you can steer and can use for your brand and for your browser abandonment. Things to keep in mind, um, what we can always do is, you know, A-B tasks, subject lines and preview tags because that's kind of the biggest level. You can also test timing. Those are easy to set up and have some impact. Plain text emails, great last reminders. If you watch my abundant checkout tutorial, a few things will actually be pretty much the same for the abundant checkout and the browser abandonment, because in theory, both are kind of the same. It's just the, the stage where a customer is in um, is a little bit deeper in the abundant checkout and a little bit warmer. But here we need some more explanation and, and the buying intent is a bit lower. But in the end, they have to make sense for both. 
it just the flow so it makes sense for your brand, your unit economics. What I mean by that is, you know, what kind of percentage can we give? What kind of offers, free shipping, just overall, you know, what kind of benefits uh, people need and stuff like that. Condition splits around free shipping. That's not suitable here. I have no idea why I still have that in here. I mean, what you can have and can have it as an offer, hey, use free shipping. But in the end, for the viewed product, it's actually one item that you portray. In the abundant checkout, you portray the entire card. So there's a difference when it comes to, you know, card value and, and stuff like that. If we have clear winning SKUs, it might be worth having a dedicated browser benefit for them. I will cover this in a later stage in this video, but what you can actually build up, let's say you have like one hero item, you can basically have a dedicated browser benefit for this specific item and then one browser benefit for all other items. That way you can get way more tailored and way more specific about this one item. But you know, it has to make sense from the, um, from the value point that you get and also from the effort and time that you spend in because most of the time, it doesn't really make that huge of a difference if you you know keep the general basics the same. So let's start with how it should not look like. So this is pretty much 99% of the brands that we audit, they have some sort of structure like that. They have a reminder, they have 10% off, and then they have a 10% reminder last chance. That's it, like this is probably you as well, but this is not how it should look like. How it actually should look like is you have like one reminder um, plus social proof. And then um, this comes back to one thing that I mentioned in one of the other videos is that we have to ask ourselves, why is someone not buying and just taking a look? Because in the end, they made the effort to go to your page. They made the effort to go to your collection place, look at the, look at the product, um, and then they stop for whatever reason. So most of the time, especially for the browser minimum, they just you know, are not in the buying mood, but we can get them to the buying mood with a few different angles that we use here. So for example, one you know, angle we can use is social proof. So we have one reminder plus social proof. Then we have another reminder plus some FAQs. Maybe some people have some objections, some questions about the item, about the shipping, about the return process, whatever it is, we handle that in a specific email. What we can do then is we basically have a free shipping uh, offer that we can leverage if that's an angle that works for your brand. What we can do then is the 10% off reminder plus the benefits. So maybe there are some unique selling points that you haven't mentioned before when it comes to your generic store, or if we have a dedicated browser abandonment flow for a dedicated item, then you need to, we want to get to the specifics. Because one thing we cannot do here is we cannot go into too, too specific because in the end it should you know have a general use for all of our items that we have in our store. Next one, 10% off urgency, plus what we can here, we can leverage some other alternatives. I'm not a big fan of having that in the abundant checkout because their buying decision is kind of already made. They just need the, the little nudge. But for the browser minimum, they might be just you know window shopping. So what we can do is we show them some other alternatives, maybe some items that they might be interested in, and then get them further down the funnel through other items that might benefit them as well. And then what we can leverage as well is like a 50% off, personal plain text from the support team, from the founder, maybe some guarantees. This is kind of our last opportunity, which you know should give them a little push. And in the end, we also have to ask ourselves, like if someone is getting the fifth email of a browser management flow, they already got maybe a few campaigns. They also got, they were on the page, they also give you the email address. So they are kind of familiar with everything. And we already spent for this potential customer. So we can afford to give a little bit more on the percentages because we already give so much, we already paid so much. So it's like, okay, whatever. If we get them, nice. If we don't, then it's, it's pretty much a loss opportunity. And then in the end, you also have to ask yourself, they only get this if they have purchased from any of those emails. So that's kind of our entire strategy and how it could look like and should look like for your brand. So play around with different incentives, play around with some reminders, play around with some urgency, play around with some unique selling points, some benefits breakdown, some FAQ, some maybe some us versus them, some comparison. How does the alternative look like? You can work with social proofs, guarantees, other alternatives. You can play around with buy now, pay later, and all of that good stuff, depending on you know, your AOV, your product items, and then in general, how pain point driven they are. You can also work with some longer form copy. So yeah, that's the entire strategy breakdown. Um, I wanted to, before diving into the actual designs that we use that you can steal. We also work on a few things. And one of them is a little nugget that, that not a lot of brands and, and agencies do is to adjust the product block vertical. Looks and it sounds pretty, pretty dumb and, and pretty small, but actually if you take a look at 
This is how a majority of emails look like on mobile. It's super, super small and they have no idea what the item actually was and it's just, it just it just looks ugly. So what you can do is you can pretty much take a look at and duplicate your product item and then just remove that. I can, let, let me quickly go through that as well. So you can just click on edit and what you will end up with if you do that through the, the Klaviyo, you will have a product block in those emails. So this is a product log that you know everyone is having. So what you can do is you actually duplicate this and then you run a total different strategy. You just run with ba -ba -ba -boom, table settings, column, row. So you end up with just event name. And then you can pretty much delete column two and row two. So what you end up with is having one row, one column, align it in the middle, you align this in the middle. And now what you have is, as I said, you have basically they see the item first and then they see the name. Or you can you can work it the other way around, but it does, it's not super ugly on mobile because even on mobile, it just, it looks like this. And before that, if we actually take a look at this, this is how it would look like. Super small and definitely not the way we want to have it. So let's take a look at the next steps when it comes to our browser benefit, which are the designs that we want to copy and follow. So this depends on a lot of things when it comes to your branding. And also one thing to keep in mind through the entire flow is that we want to keep it as generic as possible while simultaneously being super, super focused on making it as specific as possible about your brand and your generic customer audience because we want to get specific because then people are more convinced but we do not want to get too too specific because then most of the emails will not make sense when it comes to all of the items so let's say hypothetically you sell shoes and and also some hats you do not want to get super super specific when it comes to shoes in your in your um, browser environment because then if someone puts some hats into or like takes a look at the, the hat and you write copies like oh do you still look for size 36 blah 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 just doesn't make sense. So that's why we try to make it as generic as possible and around the customer audience. So here, for example, is one brand that we work with. They sell sweatproof protection clothing. So here you see the last fix you did for your sweat problem. So we go benefit a specific. You've heard the claims, the countless promises of ultimate protection, maximum observancy and complete comfort. This is what like everyone else is saying. Here's where you already had your eyes on the price. You just for this other alternatives works 100% guaranteed even in stressful situations, doesn't clock pores, cause rushes or other skin issues, zero white strikes or stains, stain free and no risk of running expensive clothing, healthy and environmentally friendly. So we pretty much win all of these categories. Stop sweat marks now, benefit driven call to action. Below are direct comparisons showing just how Aegis products perform and bring your confidence back without Aegis Boxer, without versus with, and you can see the clear benefit that we're getting. Here another one, but we go into more detail. We told the get it, battling sweat and the embarrassment it brings can be overwhelming, blah, 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 blah. Not sure whether they work. And then we have some, because this is kind of the pain point that we saw. A lot of people, you know, they tried a lot of things and they are not sure whether their items work. These shirts are great. Just purchase four more, yada, yada, yada. So here another example, got sweet cravings, because this is the angle that, you know, the brand uses. It's basically a vegan and gluten-free Desert, so God's Free Cravings, which is, you know, why people buy something. We show them the item, vertically adjusted, not horizontally. Deserts can definitely be both delicious and conscious. Our ultimate, and then here we actually put in the items that they were looking at. Our ultimate Xmas treat box is the perfect example. So whatever they are taking a look at, it's specific about their item. Our the item is the perfect example. Our creations are made with love and care using organic, gluten-free and kosher ingredients that cater to your health-conscious lifestyle. Blah, 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 blah. Get treats now. Don't believe us, hear feedback of our delighted customers. And then we go into the specific of some customers, perfect appreciation gift for my vegan friend. We, we adjust and pick the customer reviews specific to the customer audience and the benefits that they are hoping to get out and maybe also cover some objections that they have. Here another example um, of a plain text one. This is you know what you can leverage within your email marketing as well, whether it's coming from the support, you can also subject line, for example, uh, hashtag re request 1577 and that way they think oh my gosh what is that and then they open it and they see oh hey this is Maria from the customer support team of your brand and we were having a look at you know the item you were looking at and we want you to have the benefits yada 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 that's why we created a unique code for you use whatever 
for 15% of this cocoa. So that's the entire breakdown of how to set it up Clavio. You could see that. How to set up the um, product block vertically so you actually, you know, it actually makes sense on mobile and you have it mobile optimized. I went through all the things you can test and what to pay attention to. I also went through the entire strategy from A to Z, what we can do and how it should look like. And then also I went through the um, emails that we use to maximize our results so you can steal that. This is pretty much the entire breakdown of the browser abandonment tutorial within Clavio. Let me know if you have any other questions. There will be another video where I break down on how to set it up that you know you have one specific item within one specific browser abandonment flow. So stay tuned until then. Make sure to schedule your call if you are a brand doing more than 50K per month to maximize your email results. And until then, wish you a wonderful rest of the day. Take care. I hope this browser abandonment flow breakdown was of value to you. If you want us to handle all of that, then free for you to schedule your call with me. There's a link in the description that you can click on. It gets you to my scheduler. We have a super casual conversation. And by the end, you will leave with a free audit, 30 to 45 minutes of pure value that you can steal and implement yourself, or you let us handle all of that. Other than that, make sure to go through and lurk through the YouTube channel. I have some other videos on some tutorials, on strategies, on design examples, on everything you need to know when it comes to email marketing things within Clavio and outside of Clavio. So make sure to check that. Other than that, I see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.